Welcome to Cavaletto Studios. My name is Chris. I am so glad you are joining me today for this fascia style yoga stretch class. You will need two blocks, yoga blocks, uh, maybe a chair, a couple big books, something that you can improvise with. Be sure to like and subscribe below. Let's get started. All right, good morning. Welcome to our yoga fascia focus stretch today. We are beginning seated, nice and tall. Pull the chin into alignment, arms resting on the thighs. Let's just close our eyes for a moment and tune into the breath, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose. Slowing the breath, letting go of our morning or any residuals from whatever we had going on before this. Taking time for you, one more breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Good. Then just gently blink your eyes open and put a smile on your face. It's a good day to stretch out that fascia tissue. And we're gonna let gravity assist us in a lot of things that we do today. So with the shoulders completely relaxed, I want you to let your right ear drop to your right shoulder and just let your shoulders relax and just hang out here. And now take your chin just slightly down, just tuck it just a little bit and notice the change on the left side of the neck. And we're just breathing here. You can have your eyes opened or closed feeling the lengthening on the left side of the neck, maybe up even, maybe pulling in through the ear. You might even feel something up by the ear. You can rub your finger along that muscle that runs down that sternocleidomastoid, the longest muscle of the neck. Now I want you to very slowly bring your head to neutral, keeping the chin slightly tucked in. Now let your head fall to the left, your left ear to the left shoulder. And just notice how far it does or doesn't go compared to the other side. Again, keeping the chin slightly tucked in. Let gravity assist, pulling that head gently over, shoulders relaxed. Maybe you feel a little tightness on the opposite side. Whew. You probably can tell I'm, if you're noticing my neck, I don't go as far on this side. How is yours feeling? A little stiff comparatively. Now we're going to bring our head back to neutral, keeping that chin in alignment, posture tall. Let your right ear drop to the right shoulder again. So we're back on that first side, tuck that chin just slightly and breathe. And again, let gravity assist. Our head has, you know, it's, it's heavy. You know, we're, we're super smart. So our brain is, uh, weighs a bit and you got that poundage helping pull it over, that gravity, lengthening. Try not to lean, you're just sitting tall, feeling that stretch and breathing. As long as there's no pinching. And then very slowly bring your head to center and go to the other side. Again, chin is tucked. Might be a little easier the second time. Letting the head just rest, leaning it over. Ear towards shoulder, shoulders relaxed. We're breathing, almost there. And then bring that head back to neutral. Straighten up as tall as you can. Feel the crown of your head pushing to the sky. Nice, bring, those sh the, bring the shoulders up to the ears and then all the way back down and then bring the shoulders up, tuck the chin in and then bring the shoulders down. Now big shoulder rolls with the elbows up, keeping that chin in alignment, sitting nice and tall. One more circle, excellent. Now we're gonna switch our seated posture to hero. So you're just gonna tuck your knees under and you can have the tops of your feet on the floor, or you can tuck your toes. You can even sit on a blanket if you would like. So you're gonna sit nice and tall. Uh, so you can be under or feet tucked. But get comfortable. We're gonna mess with our hands now. We're gonna 
stretch out the fascia tissue, especially around the wrist. There's that band of fascia around the wrist. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread out the fingers really wide, place them on the mat on either side of your knees, and then gently start to push just your fingers into the mat, keeping your palms off the mat, feel the stretch. Then melt your whole palm into the mat, pressing down. Good, now I want you to straighten out your elbows and start to lean forward into it. Lean forward just a little bit. Good, now we're gonna to continue to add variations and I want you to go where you feel comfortable with your wrist. If this is plenty, stay here. If you can bring them back next to you, a little bit closer, plant those palms into the floor and then lean into it. We're keeping the palms down and we're just leaning forward, arms are straight, so you're stretching out through that wrist. Lean forward, good. Again, gravity assisting, leaning, breathing through it. One more time. Now I want you to lift up and just do, finger, I call them fingertip push-ups. So you're just pushing up and down. The palm doesn't touch the floor. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see a little bit. The thumb doesn't touch either. So just a little stretch there. There we go. And then you're gonna flip your palms upward, fingers towards the back of the body. Try to lay the back of your hand on the floor and then wiggle those fingers. So you're gonna feel that stretch through the forearm and then gently rock your whole body side to side, just gently, never forcing anything. You're gonna feel that shift. Find your center now and then just gently lean um, forward into the back of your hands, but lift the upper body. So you're gonna feel a little bit extra stretch in that forearm. Now try to wiggle those fingers and smile at the same time, never forcing anything. Stretching all that tissue out. Now very slowly release, flip the fingers back forward again, back into the palms. And I want you to push side to side with the body and into the weight into the hands, the palms. So as you're shifting side to side, think about the pad right below the thumb. So if you use the mouse, sometimes that gets tender. Just a gentle rock, so you're pressing into the padding of that thumb right there. And if you are right-handed or just using that mouse, sometimes that's where you can feel it, right into there. Flex those fingers, really push those fingers, knuckles into the mat or the floor as you're rocking side to side. Good, and then release. Now, you're gonna hold onto your wrist with the opposite hand, make a fist. Doesn't matter which one, we're gonna do both. And then like you're hammering forward and back, you're gonna slide it, so see like this. So it's not yes or no, it's side to side. And you're holding on nice and tight around that wrist. Just a nice little side to side. This just helps with the ligaments, all the nerves running down here that we use from the mouse. And then we're gonna switch, make a fist, and go side to side again. And you want this to feel good. Getting blood flow, loosening up that fascia tissue. Now, we're gonna take the finger, let's take the right hand, place the left hand, right hand is forward like you're saying stop, fingers facing the sky, place your left hand across those fingers and gently pull them back towards your body. The thumb is loose, you can move the thumb. Then you're gonna keep the hands exactly where they are, bend the right elbow and pull it to the rib cage and just flex it back. And then you're gonna reach it forward, push the, Bend your wrist so your fingers are pointing towards the floor and push your left hand on the back of your right hand and then wiggle those fingers. So again, another way to stretch that forearm. So hopefully it's a lot easier to put weight into the wrist, the hands. And then let's try the other side. So now left hand, hold that right hand against the fingers, rotate that thumb and then keep the hands exactly where they are, but bend the left elbow, pull it back into the rib cage, still stretching through that, that left hand. And then we're gonna straighten the arm, bend the wrist, the left wrist, and then hold the back of your left hand and wiggle those fingers. 
Feels so good. Excellent. Now one last one. Open and close the fingers. Now you're going to reach both hands forward. Flip the hands so the backs of the hands are facing each other. Palms are out. Then I want you to take your right hand over the top of the left, place the palms together and interlace the fingers. So it looks like you're crisscrossing the arms and then I want you to pull the palms and the fingers towards your body underneath, scoop them under so your elbows go down and your palms come up and they come to your chest or heart space. Now this might be plenty for you. I'm gonna add a challenge for your wrists and you're going to straighten out those arms. Now, you might go here and it hurts the wrist, then don't go any further. That's key. I want you to maybe just hold, trying to get them interlaced is plenty. So I'll, I'll tell you a little secret. I practiced this all weekend long before doing this today and did it a few times this morning. So you look at, I'm moving in and out so you can bring the hands back to the chest and move them out. And so if you practice this, it definitely will loosen up your wrist. And then we're gonna unwind. Take them back to where we started, so undo. Now you're gonna open the fingers, take that right hand and flip it so it goes under the left. So you're still interlaced, you just put the opposite hand on top and you're gonna pull it under. Now this side might be completely different than the other and straighten it out. Like this side's way easier for me because it's my left wrist. So it doesn't, it's not as tight so I don't have to practice getting there as often. So again, just be gentle with your body. If, if, if when I first started this, I could maybe go this far and it just took gentle holding it here, letting the body adapt and then eventually you get there. And then we're gonna unwind and open up the hands and then massage the wrists, open the fingers, do make adjustments, do what you need to do. Maybe rub the hands a little bit together. Feels so good, interlace, and then open. So hopefully you've got some blood flow, some energy running through those hands. We're gonna shift off of our hips now, and we're gonna turn, and we're just gonna lay all the way onto our backs, all the way down. And maybe flex and point those feet, maybe move them side to side, knees are bent, feet are flat on the floor, and I'm just lifting my feet and twisting and turning them side to side. So I'm patting down either side, just to loosen up the ankles from whatever position you were in. You might feel some blood flow to the leg now, some coolness. Again, fascia, we squished it. And now it's, it's hydrating. Walk your shoulders away from your ears. Now we're gonna straighten out the legs. And I want you to just uh, get yourself comfortable and breathe. Let your head completely relax on the floor. Again, we're gonna let gravity assist us. So what I want you to do now is let your legs just fall open, be relaxed. Let your head turn to the right, just wherever it goes. Don't force it, just let it go as far as it can. Now I want you to just let gravity continue to pull your head to the right. Maybe close your eyes. Feel the stretch through the opposite side of the neck. And breathe, inhale and exhale. See if gravity can take that head a little bit further to the right, stretching through the neck. This helps release tension in the shoulders and the neck as well. Because again, the body will adapt to anything we put it through. So it's adapting right now. Now very slowly, we're gonna bring your head back to center and let your head fall to the left now. Now it might take a moment to get used to being on this side, so let it adapt. Maybe you close your eyes, maybe you like them open, that's okay. See if gravity can assist your head going a little further, never forcing it. Gravity is our friend today. It's gonna to help lengthen our muscles and our fascia tissue. And then very slowly bring your head back to neutral. And just notice the difference. Stay here for a moment. Take a breath in. And exhale it out. 
And then let your head turn again to the right. Now this time, let it fall with the gravity. Now this time I want you to gently nod your head like you're saying yes. It's a very small movement. And just feel what's going on in the opposite side of the neck. You want it to feel good. If there's something that doesn't feel good or pinching, then I want you to make adjustments. And then see if your head rolls a little further, pausing your nod. And then very slowly let your head turn to center. Make any adjustments you need to, and then your head will turn to the left. And then gently nod like you're saying yes. And you want this to feel good. Maybe you feel some stiffness leaving the opposite side. Maybe you're moving a little better already. And then pause your nod and let your head turn with gravity a little more. And then gently bring your head back to neutral. And then tr relax everything. <clears throat> Lengthen through the neck, feel the stretch. Now you're going to pull your right knee into your chest. Give it a squeeze. Left leg stays on the floor. I want you to start to draw little circles, holding on to that shin or the back of the thigh. Circle the knee around, pulling it towards the chest, and then around a big circle, away from the chest. One more circle, and then we're going to change direction. Circle the opposite way. Big circles. Now you're going to pause and hold the knee towards your chest. I want you to take your right hand and place it on your front of your knee or your thigh, of that right thigh. And I want you to tuck. Normally we would tuck our belly into the spine, but I want you to actually let the arch remain, but not overarch, and just push your tailbone down. Now push your hand into your knee or your thigh. So you're feeling that resistance, but you're also pushing your tailbone down. You're, but not your low back so much. So you're maintaining a neutral spine, if that makes sense. And automatically, you're going to maybe feel that core start to activate because it's trying to maintain that stabilization. And then release and hug the knee in. And then one more time, press into the knee. Feel that lower part of that tailbone pushing into the floor. So it's not your low back. It's more like right at the top of the, the middle of the glutes there. Good. Hug the knee in and then release it. Let that leg go all the way to the floor and hug your left knee into the chest. And notice the difference. Feel what's going on in that right hip when you let it lengthen. And now we're going to draw circles with the left knee. Circle it around. And then reverse. Circle the opposite way. Feels so good. Feeling things. Try not to move too much. Now hug the knee in. Now find that neutral spine again. Place your left hand on the front of the left thigh or on the knee. Tuck your head. Find your neutral spine so you're not necessarily tucking it in because you're going to push against the knee or the thigh and feel that tailbone pushing into the floor. So that automatically, that belly, you're going to feel it maybe firing up. That core wants to work. So you're not using the shoulders. You're lengthening the neck and feeling the core work. Push, push, push and then release and hug. We're going to do that one more time so you can get it, get it down good. So you can press into that knee, push it away, but it's fighting you. It's not letting, it's resisting, and then your tailbone is pushing into the floor. And hug the knee. 
Excellent. Go ahead and hug both knees into the chest. Give it a rock side to side. Now we're going to come all the way up to tabletop. You can roll to your side or you can hold the thighs and maybe roll all the way up. Tuck, cross your legs. We're going to shift to tabletop. And some of you maybe just rolled to the side. That's fine. We're going to place those hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Spread out those fingers and then rotate the elbows. Circle, circle. They're rotating in and out like you're turning the inside of the elbow forward and then out. Notice what's going on in those fingertips. Now I want you to shift all your body weight evenly and try not to shift it once we lift that right hand straight out and lengthen and breathe and then try the left leg, lengthen it. And now breathe, looking down at your left thumb, push into those fingertips. Take a breath in, flex the left foot and then bring the hand and the knee all the way back to the floor. And then this time we're going to again reach the left arm. Try not to shift your weight and then the right leg. Flex the foot, push into those fingertips on the floor. Pull the shoulders away from the ears. And then back, hands on the floor. Nice. And then rock yourself away from the hands and then back to the hands. Very good. Now we're going to tuck the toes. You're going to get to, um, this is where you're going to want, oh, actually you don't need the blocks quite yet, but they are, we are going to use them very soon. So if you need them, I'm going to move my blocks closer so I can grab them. We're going to lift our hips and we're very, we're passing through the down dog because we're just going to walk the feet forward. We're going to find a forward fold so we can gradually slowly rise all the way up to our mountain and then tap the fingers, exhale palms to heart space. We're standing. We made it off the ground. Excellent. So let's find our mountain. Turn those toes facing forward. We're going to get to forward fold later and you're going to love it because it's really going to loosen up the thoracic and the hips and we're just going to feel amazing. And it's, I can't wait to see how you move at the end here because it's going to just feel so good. So look at your toes, make sure they're facing forward, lift both arms up and let's exhale those shoulders back into alignment, tucking that chin into alignment, soften the knees. Now I want you to start to draw circles with the whole upper body. Maybe like you're drawing circles on the ceiling with your hands, but your arms are not moving. So the whole body is circling around big circles, not leaning too far back that it bothers your back, but just big circles. One more circle and then change direction all the way up and around. Now, as we shift directions and we shift on this circle, believe it or not, the fascia and the muscle tissue is working together. As we shift our weight to one side, it will activate and deactivate different parts of the fascia and the muscle tissue. And then we're going to find our steady spot right in the middle. Let's try a back bend, leaning just back a little, a mini back bend, thumbs reaching towards the back, looking up at the sky and breathing in and then find your neutral spine coming back to neutral. Let's relax those shoulders. I found myself doing this whole thing. So relax those shoulders, soften the knees and then lean towards, keep everything tall, lean the upper body towards your right. Leaning it over. Now, this is where we're going to appreciate gravity because it's going to assist us as we lean over. Notice what's going on with your feet. Both arches are pressed into the floor, lengthening through the leg and the side of the waist. Let's breathe in and up and try the other side. Keep the chin in alignment, shoulders relaxed. Try to stay tall as just letting the side of the body. Breathe. And again, notice this side. What are the arches of the feet doing? Are you gripping with your toes? Are your knees soft? Oh, are you breathing? And then we're going to come all the way back up and then lean to the right again. 
Notice how much easier it is the second time. Because guess what? Our bodies have adapted. Yay, they adapted. And then we're coming back up again. Let's try the left side. Leaning into it. Feels so good. And then we're coming all the way back up. Let's try that mini back bend again. Leaning back, looking up at the sky. So I'm going to turn so you can see. So you're here, just leaning back, lengthening through the front. Deep breath in. Exhale, palms to heart space. Now we're going to take the blocks and we're going to stack the blocks right in front of us. Now, if you don't have blocks, feel free to use a chair, put like a low chair in front of you because I want something pretty high up that you can hold onto. You're going to take your feet wider than your hips. Take them nice and wide. We're going to, and we're just going to lean over and we're going to hold onto the blocks. And just get comfy right there. So again, if you're on a chair, I want you to think about flattening out your back. Feel your tailbone pulling back and the crown of your head forward and just flatten out your back. Now I want you to turn your head to the right and look to the right. And I want you to just hold and pause and breathe. We're going to hold this. And we're going to do the other side as well. Now let's slowly transition to the other side. And you'll feel a nice twist through the hip. And then come all the way back to the right again. And hold, feel that twist. Let the hips go with you. And then slowly transition again to the left. And then we're going to come back to center. Now, if you've got blocks, see if you can lower them, lower the block. Or maybe you just bend the elbows a little more if you're on a chair, but you're still flattening out the back. And let's try it again. Twist. Now, you might feel it more down the leg, depending on what you have going on. Look behind you and twist. Legs stay straight. Just feel it up the leg, the glutes. Slowly twisting to the other side. Really flatten out that back. Toes are feet facing forward. And then back to center. See if you can go one more time a little bit lower. Flatten out the back because you want a straight flat back and then twist to the right. Let the body adapt to this position. And then slowly transition to the left. Feel how the foot changes, how it's trying to maybe compensate or adapt to that position. And then we're going to come back to center. Excellent. Now we're going to take the blocks. Now you're going to separate them. You're going to heel toe your feet together. Take your right foot in between the block and step back to the left. So you're coming to a high lunge, but I want you to hold on to the blocks. Pull the shoulders away from the ears. I want you to really lengthen the spine. And the crown of your head is pushing forward again, tailbone back. Now adjust your hips. Maybe pull that left hip forward and then back. And then start to make very tiny, like micro movements with your pelvis. Very small. You might feel this in the glute. You might feel it in the, you don't want to feel too much in the low back but very small little rotation of those hips. Reverse direction. So you're going to feel that left hip flexor probably stretching out a bit. Relax those shoulders. You can do this. And then just really lengthen. See if you can melt a little deeper into it. So lowering the hips a little more. Try those circles again. Little circles in that hip. And reverse direction. Staying with that lunge, the knee is over the ankle, making sure not too much pressure is in the front leg. You want to even between both. Excellent. Now you're going to take the blocks and just set, set them to the side and bring both hands to the floor and step back to plank. Engage that core. Spread out those fingers, push through those fingertips. 
Now I want you to lower your knees to the floor to a modified plank. Pull your right foot up, then your left, and then open up that chest and lengthen through the arms. Feel your crown of your head pushing up and forward and breathe. Now we're gonna tuck the toes and we're gonna shift to a downward facing dog. Here you are, here's our downward facing dog. Make those adjustments, shift those hips, pedal those feet and just breathe here. Now you're going to bring the right leg up, three-legged dog, bend the knee, and I want you to bring that foot between the hands and then go ahead and bring the left foot to join. So now you're in a forward fold. But we're gonna bring one block in front of us now. So just one block right in front of those feet. And the feet are together, pretty close together. I want you to bend your left knee and I want you to fold forward towards your block and then move your block to the right side and twist your body towards the right, towards that block. See, I had a plan and there's more to come. <laughs> That's why we started nice and tall flat back so we could get even deeper into this one. Maybe some of you can go lower block. You can even lower it. Bring that nose towards your knee. Think about the arch of your foot. Notice where you might be feeling it up the leg. Now I want you to slowly transition to center. I want you to bend the right knee and keep the left leg straight. Lower forward, forward fold. Bring that block to the left side. And notice the difference. This side might be a little tighter. But don't worry, we're gonna fix that. Just stay tuned, it's coming. The other side. And then we're gonna come back to center, straighten out both legs. Good. We all doing okay out there? Are you hanging in there? Literally. Now you're gonna bring both the blocks on either side and you're going to step back with the right leg. So that left knee, left foot is in between the blocks. We just switch legs so you're nice and tall. Now I want you to really pull the shoulders away from the ears, start to draw that back hip lower so we come into this lunge just like we did before. Feel that right hip, pull it back, pull it forward, and then start to draw very micro, mini pelvic movements, just enough that you're starting to feel some adjustments in the hip, in that hip flexor. Make sure your knee is over the ankle. I know it seems really strange doing these little movements, how much it can actually affect our bodies. It really can make a huge difference because we have to love our body, it adapts. Again, we're adapting just like these times right now, we're adapting to everything. And then try to pause and lengthen, maybe lift the chest, lower the hips a little more. Notice what's going on with that left knee, pulling it in towards the center. Try micro movements again. Not pinching the low back, we're not overarching, shifting the other way, circle, circle. You can do it. Breathe, breathe. Excellent. We're gonna step the, bring the blocks a little bit outside. Hands on the floor. Let's step back to our plank again. Engage those muscles, find them. Let's lower the knees to the floor. Bend the left knee, then the right knee. Open it up. Open the chest, lift the head. Take a breath in and out. Tuck your toes, let's find our downward facing dog. Pedal out those feet. Make those adjustments. See what's going on. Are the feet going a little closer to the floor now? Hmm. Draw that chest towards the thighs. Press those fingertips into the floor as you pull your shoulder blades away from your head. And then go up onto the toes, back into the heels. Good. Let's press our right foot into the floor. Lift the left leg, three-legged dog. Bend the knee. 
Bring the foot between the hands and the, the right joins it for forward fold. And then go ahead and bring a block in front of you. And then I want you to fold all the way down. Just let your body hang. Legs are straight. Good, holding that block, we're going to bend the right knee and I want you to twist your upper body to the left towards that left straight leg, maybe move the block, maybe you can go lower depending on your flexibility. And this is where we let gravity assist again, never forcing it. Notice what's going on with the feet. Are they starting to roll to the outer edges because you're, over, you're pushing it too much? Maybe you need to lengthen or go higher on a block so you can keep your feet flat and it's comfortable. I'm saying that because that's what I did if you were peeking and saw me. Yep. And then very slowly transition through the center. Let's try the other side. So the legs switch. So now your left knee bends, right leg straightens, and your head reaches towards the knee. But again, oh, if you start to adapt, by rolling out on those feet, let's lift higher up with your upper body or raise your block higher so you're not forcing it. So the feet are flat. The body will take the path of least resistance. That's why I say that. We want to start to adapt and let it focus and not to, I don't want to say cheat because it's not really cheating. It's just trying to be comfortable. And we're going to come back to center. Let's take a nice flat back and inhale. And then exhale, fold, go ahead and slide the block out to the side so they're still on either side of us. We're gonna bend the knees, plant the hands, and step back to plank. And you're just gonna breathe and lengthen the spine, full plank here. Now here we're gonna use all those muscles and let gravity assist again, and we're gonna do a chaturanga. But I want you to resist, push the floor away as you bend the elbows and slowly lower your belly all the way to the floor. Once you get to the floor, you're gonna walk your elbows forward to sphinx. Palms are flat, elbows, forearms are on the floor. You're going to draw and open up that chest. Press each fingertip into the floor and lengthen through the neck and the spine. And breathe, feel the stretch through the belly. Now with your chest opening up, pushing your shoulders away from the ears and ears away from your shoulders. I want you to turn your head and look over your right shoulder. I want you to breathe, and I'm gonna add a challenge here. Lift your right leg just a little off the floor as you're looking to the right. And hold it there and breathe. And then slowly lower your right leg, let your head come back to center. Realign and turn your head to the left. And then slowly lift the left leg off the floor just to where it's comfortable. Notice what's working. And then lower the leg, head comes back to center. Readjust, elbows check them underneath the shoulders, lift and open a little more. Turn your head to the right again. Lift the right leg, but higher this time. I bet you can go higher because your body adapted. I'm way higher than I did the second time, first time, excuse me, on the second. And then lower the leg, head to center. Realign, lengthen the spine. Turn to the left, the head to the left. Lift the left leg. Notice what's working also. The obliques, the core. We're breathing. Lower the leg. Back to center. Excellent. We're going to slide the hands out from underneath, hands next to the chest. Walk those feet in. Now you can do a baby, baby cobra if you'd like, or you can transition to a full up dog, lengthening all the way up. And then we're going to shift to a downward facing dog and walk it out. Pedal those feet, shift those hips. and breathe and then plant those heels find your downward facing dog draw the chest towards the thighs push into those fingertips now I want you to plant your left heel towards the floor bend your right knee as you lift all the way up to a three-legged dog knee is bent 
straighten out that leg and then bend it again. I want you to pull it all the way forward between your hands. This time now you're gonna lower your left knee all the way to the floor and I want you to untuck your back toe so the top of your foot is flat and then lift all the way up. So you're almost on top of your knee. So your right foot is flat and you're here. Now, if you need to use those blocks, feel free. So we're gonna work through our way. When we slide forward, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be moving those hips so you're nice and tall. I'm gonna demonstrate a couple here in case you can use the hip blocks and just move forward if this is challenging. But I want you to try to use your arms because again, we're gonna adapt. So we're gonna reach the arms up as we slide forward. And then I want you to come back over the knee and then hinge forward and then back one more time. Hinge forward, good, and then back. Now we're gonna open the arms wide. Open the arms wide. Feels different, doesn't it? Feels very different. Let's do that again. Open it. One more time. Open it. Excellent. All your weight is separate. It's not just in the front or the back. It's, and then open. Now last one. Reach the arms behind you. Pull the shoulders down and back. And then slide forward. Keeping the chin tucked. And then back. And then slide. Lift those arms behind you. We have one more. Lift them behind. Excellent. And then bring your hands to the floor. Tuck your back toe. Slide that foot back up to your three-legged dog. Oh, we got a pop there. And then bring the foot to the floor, both feet back down to your downward facing dog. Spread out those fingers. Plant your right heel, lengthen and lift the left leg. Bend the knee. Three-legged dog and then straighten out that leg. Good, you're gonna bend it again. And this time bringing it between your hands so you can lower your right knee. Untuck the toe and lift yourself up. Find yourself nice and tall. Again, when you go forward, make sure you're not here. We don't want to ever want the heel coming off or the knee in front of the toe. So make sure you have space. So we're gonna slide forward and just reach the arms up and then come back. Shall we do this two more times? So as we shift into these positions and these postures, the body is adapting. It's enjoying that you're taking it slow, that you're caring, open it up. Let's do it one more time, two more times. Can you feel that? Isn't that amazing? It's like, it just gets easier every time. And then we're gonna go back, we're gonna reach the arms Open up the chest, keep the chin tucked. Lengthen of those arms, reach behind you like they're reaching for the back foot. And we're not overarching this way. We can keep the spine in alignment and just let those hips open up. And finish there. Excellent. So now we're going to bring the hands to the floor. Let's find our, bring that foot back to three-legged dog and then back to downward facing dog. Spread out those fingers. Up and down into the toes and the heels. Now I want you to take a walk forward, both feet forward, forward fold. Take a half lift, lengthen and inhale, exhale fold, soften or bend the knees, inhale rise all the way up Exhale, palms to heart space. And release to mountain. Excellent. Now, we're gonna do something a little different. Whew, getting close on time here. I want you to, again, stack your blocks. Turn them this way. And then what we're gonna do is you're going to, this is gonna be a little different for some of you. You're gonna take your left foot and you're gonna place it next to the blocks. And then I want you to take your right foot back and turn it out like an L like you were gonna to go to warrior two, but we're not, because you're gonna open up the hips. We're gonna try triangle, but a different way. We're gonna to adapt to it, and we're not gonna let our hips quite um, adjust as much, because I wanna really focus on more of the upper body. 
So I want you to reach your arms out to the sides, lengthen. Think about lengthening your spine, crown of your head. Turn your palms towards the front, facing me. Thumbs are up to the sky. Now I want you to take your left hand and you're going to start to reach forward, but without shifting your hips. Okay, just reach, reach. Just, and you won't go as far, right? Can you feel more of a stretch? Probably right in here. Because if you find yourself doing this, you're gonna try to keep that hip level and just reach. Then reach for the top of your blocks without letting that hip shift backwards. And I want you to pull your top left shoulder, right shoulder back behind you, right hand on your hip. So you're reaching for your blocks that are stacked right in front of that left arch. And I want you to open up, lengthen, maybe look up at the sky. Notice the difference. Now here, if you would like, you can add the arm up, that right arm. Feel the hand pulling to the back and feel the shoulder fall. Fall, fall low. Maybe you can drop a little lower now. Don't let your, don't let your hip shift. Keep it, keep it controlled. So you're really stretching now more through the hip and that uh, inner, um, the, the uh, obliques, internal, external obliques. I was blanking on what I was trying to say there. Maybe you can drop your block a little lower as long as you don't start to collapse through the chest. And then you're slowly going to windmill it all the way back up. Palms to heart space. Excellent. We're going to shift sides. So I just want you to literally reach down, pick up your blocks, pivot your feet, and place your blocks on the other side. It's as simple as that because I want you to keep that alignment just where your feet were so it's the same on both sides. Lengthen the arms, thumbs are up. Again, we, we naturally want to do this little hip shift, but I want you to stay as long and tall as you can and then start to reach forward just with the upper body. I can't go as far. So if I try to reach without shifting my hips, my 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 Flexibility isn't quite there, but that's okay. Take your left hand, place it on your hip, and draw your right hand towards the blocks. If you feel your left hip pushing out, draw it back into alignment. Keep your left shoulder open and lengthen through the neck and lean into it. Think about both hips pushing forward as well, not letting your butt drop backwards. Or open up the heart space. Maybe you lift the left arm now. Remember, your body's adapting. And notice, notice what's going on right here, in the, which I'm, I'm pointing to the side of my waist, the obliques. Breathe through it. Maybe you can drop lower on the blocks. Maybe you can shift your block to be a little lower and continue breathing. We're almost there. And then we're coming back to center. Bring the palms to heart space. Excellent job. All right, now you're gonna come down, take your blocks, go ahead and pivot both feet back to the front of your mat. And you're going to line up your blocks like a T. Go ahead and step all the way back to your plank for a moment over your blocks. So they're like a T at the front of your mat. I want you to take a deep breath in, find your plank. Good, draw to your knees, modified plank, and then pivot around. You're basically flipping upside down, so your chest, you're sitting on your bottom and your back is to the blocks, and we are going to go to a supported fish pose. So to know where to, the block goes, you would basically find your rib cage in the back here, and that block would go it would start, the bottom of the block would be at the bottom of your rib cage. So not below it. So you want it way up high and it would, you would lay back on it and you put your head on the other block. Now you never want your head falling on the floor. If you don't have two blocks, you can use um, like a towel rolled up is fine. And we're gonna straighten out our legs. 
Now we're only going to reach your arms overhead and then reach your arms behind your head over top. And just reach, reach, reach. Feel the lengthening, the stretching. And then go ahead and bring the arms back up to the sky. And then I want you to open them wide out to the side. And then sweep them up behind you like you're making a snow angel. And then all the way back down by your hips. So make snow angels on the floor, up and back. All the way. Hopefully you don't have a water bottle. I have blankets I'm hitting. I'm going to slide them out of the way. Up and back. One more sweep. And then reach the arms overhead. Hold them there. And I want you to gently rock your upper body side to side. Don't fall off your blocks or your towels or whatever you're using or your books. And then bring the arms next to the body out like a T and just relax here and feel how much easier that is. Close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep breath in. Exhale out. Maybe you feel the energy running through your body. You're going to bend a knee. I want you to roll off of your blocks. Slide them out of your way. And then you're just going to lay back down on the floor all the way. Walk your shoulders away from your ears. Turn your palms up and let your legs just lay flat on the floor and just let them fall open. Close your eyes for a moment. And just notice what's going on in the body. Maybe it feels just more comfortable. Maybe your body melts easier. Let your head roll to the left. Maybe feel more length in the neck. And then gently let your head roll to the right. Maybe it's easier and you have more flexibility in the neck. Head rolls back to center. Good. Bend the knees. Place the feet flat on the floor. Walk them in. Maybe reach your hands to your heels and then slowly lift to a bridge, lengthening through the spine and then slowly lower the hips. Hug the knees into the chest, a little rock side to side. And then you're going to roll yourself all the way up. You're going to turn and sit nice and tall. Pull the shoulders away from the ears. Draw the chin into the in alignment, feel the crown of your head pushing to the top. And just notice, close your eyes for a moment and notice if you're taller, if you feel more balanced, some energy. Your fascia is so happy. Make sure you drink a lot of water. Eat some good nutritious food today to fuel the body. Take a deep breath in, reach those arms overhead, look up at the hands, exhale. Hands to heart, chin to chest. Namaste.